So in part two of this uh, ocean acidification series, we saw the ocean acidification video. Now, if you were taking notes, you probably did what I did and started taking them in the first box. Uh, so let's take this NOAA and do Control X to cut, and then put it right here, Control V, because that's not the NOAA video. This is the ACE Alliance for Climate Education video. Uh, the next video we're going to watch is the NOAA video, and that one. Acid water takes its toll on Puget Sound shellfish. Let's watch that one and see what's going on here. The oysters grown at Shino Waisaki's family farm near Olympia, Washington, are served in some of the finest restaurants in Manhattan. What's her family's secret to raising the perfect Pacific oyster? We think our water tastes great here and that makes our oysters taste great. Chelsea Farms can only raise oysters if they can purchase oyster larvae, also called oyster seed, from hatcheries. But oyster seed production in the Northwest has plummeted in recent years by as much as 80%. The oceans are becoming more acidic as they absorb carbon dioxide that is added to the air from burning fossil fuels. So what you're seeing here is an example of how ocean acidification is affecting our world. And it's happening here, right in our state, Puget Sound, uh, first. We're one of the first to feel it. Just like the stories you saw of those kids in the climate change video as well. This is how climate change is affecting the Pacific Northwest. Ocean acidification is this huge problem, and there's so many things. It's the currents, it's the carbon dioxide, it's the arginite, and it's most of which I understand a tiny fraction of. But what I do understand is when the nursery calls on the phone and says there's no oyster seed to ship. They had the oyster beds all ready to go. They had spent all this time getting them there and then there's nothing to put out, it's sad. Puget Sound has some of the most corrosive water found anywhere in the world. A natural process brings acidic water from the deep ocean to the surface, where shellfish live. And what scientists have learned recently is that the plankton that absorb the carbon uh, from the air in the water is getting eaten by fish and animals that live deeper, so they're taking that carbon dioxide even deeper. And then the upwelling we get in the oceans here, right off our coast, and in the Puget Sound, is what's bringing all that extra carbon, making our waters more corrosive. Now what corrosive means is more acidic, and that's because of the carbon dioxide attaching to a hydrogen from H2O and becoming carbonic acid, making the water more acidic. That's why Washington's shellfish industry, a $270 million a year business that supports 3,200 jobs, is the first to feel the effects of the global phenomenon called ocean acidification. We're an industry that relies on calcifiers, so we're the first to see the effects and scream about it. Workers at Taylor Shellfish Farms first noticed a problem in their hatcheries in Deba Bay. With oysters, the vulnerable stage that's, that dissolves in these corrosive waters is for the first two or three days of their life. They're using a form of calcium carbonate to build their shell. They dissolve really easily. When the waters were highly corrosive, the organisms died within two days. The oyster larvae just simply died. When the water was high pH, they did just fine. It was just like a switch. Uh, high pH is less acidic. Low pH is more acidic. So that's how we understand pH. And we're going to continue with this in the next episode.